Don't miss our latest tutorial on how to fade out your wings. I can bits. What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here again with you today with another fantastic hobby tutorial on how to get some dope fades on your both your wings and your jump packs as well. Now, this of course is Saint Celestine and her Gemini twins, the Yin Yang twins as we like to call them down here in the dirty dirty. But, but this tutorial is going to give you two different ideas on how to feather out your wings with an airbrush but also some alternate ideas on how to go back in and highlight all the edges. Personally, me, I kind of wish I had stayed with just a straight fade on these backpacks right here instead of edge highlighting them. But what's done is done and we couldn't stop the signal. Once we started, it was not stopping. So we finished those off and they're gonna have just a different look. But if I had to go back and do it again, I probably just would have left them, but some people prefer that. So it's kind of cool that we have uh, the tutorial where you can do it both ways. Now granted, we didn't paint the Celestine on stream. We actually did that live on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash spiky bits TV. Check that out over there. Give us a follow because you get a free cat nap that you can use for our fantastic giveaways that we do every stream every Monday night at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 11 p.m., and Friday at 3.30 p.m. We are part of the Long War Network, the Big Reading Network, where we stream with our other members, Kenny Boucher, Sophie's Gaming, and Key Lime Prime. So check it out. This tutorial is pretty awesome. I really enjoyed using the gold from Army Painter, which we kind of talk about what this tutorial really isn't on that. It's more on the fades and such, but you'll kind of see some of the stuff that I do inside the tutorial and a few of the different techniques I was using on the gold that I kind of point out uh, in the middle of it as well. So step one on the blue fade train is to get in there and base coat the part that you're going to do blue. Sometimes this is easier to uh, spray blue, but in this particular instance, we had already done all of the gold work. So I just went in and I used the Cantor Air Blue and just base coated all the stuff right here. I had to use a couple of coats because unfortunately it was a little watery, but that's okay. So we preserved all that gold work, which we're probably going to get a little bit of overspray on. It's okay, we'll go back and fade it. The Army Painter paints are great for this. It ain't even gonna be a thing. But real quick, just to review, so you know what may or may not be coming next or how we got to this point, if you haven't watched the gold video, was we did a first a base coat, a Zenthial highlight of shining silver over black, and we worked it up to true copper, to greedy gold, and then finally, we went in and used a little bit of bright gold mixed in with greedy gold. And then of course we're gonna go in and use uh, some brush highlights for all that. But for right now, now we're ready to use the next color, the very first color in this highlight train, which is going to be a Lothran blue. So we got our Lothran blue in the pot right here. And then we're just gonna very gently hit just the areas we're going to aim about in the middle right here to try to make that start that fade right off looks like we're good there i should have gloves on couldn't find any sometimes you just got to go in and get it done so there you can see very easily we aimed right at the middle now we are we are unfortunately going to get a little bit of overspread like i said on that gold area but that's okay we'll come back and fade it back with the gold and this will be a little bit of a a two-part tutorial. It looks like that's a solid fade right off the bat. And let's hit the sides here. And whoop, flip it around. Dropped. <laughs> it's been dropped. Flip it around and get those other angles real quick. Again, aiming at the middle. Same here, aiming at the middle. Taking it back. Nice and easy fades. Checking all of our angles before we switch to another color because we only put a little bit in the pot, just enough to use because this isn't that much detail to be quite honest. And flip it back around. And this is how you become uh, pretty good with the airbrush. It's all about the angles and giving the paint enough time to work its way Remember, this stuff is very transparent and it's super transparent in the pot as well. 
So you want to make sure you give everything just enough time to get in here. And I actually think we're going to have to go back with some Cantor blue across there. We might have got a little crazy with the face, but that's okay. That's what happens sometimes. Now that that's all done, we went and grabbed some of our Cantor blue, that dark base color. And we're going to get in here. We're going to attempt to hit some of these back edges here, aiming almost at the metallic areas to get that crossfade going and kind of fix a little bit of the overspray that happened right there. Listen, we don't really need a whole lot. Kind of like what you just saw right there. That's probably good enough to get us back on track and to finish strong with some white at the very tips. By white, I mean a gray of sorts. And there we go, it looks like it's fixed. Winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. Time to take it up to the final highlight color. Next up is the final highlight color, all than gray, which we've already threw a little in the pot right here. Checking our mix, good to go. So now what we're gonna do is just aim right off of these edges right here just to, so we clip the actual edge itself that we're trying to highlight here. So I'm aiming, <laughs> let me make sure I'm pushing paint first. There we go. So we're aiming off the edge. Very subtle, but we're getting it there. And just hitting the very edges. Airbrush is giving us a little bit of a, a little bit of fit, but that happens from time to time, right? There we go. Okay. So back in, just hitting the very edges. And I'm going to get up in here around the backpack uh, mount. And got some nice good fades right there, hit the edge right here, and back here, and we're going to flip it over and do it all again, but this is going to be a little bit different because we got all those insides, so that gives us an opportunity to kind of uh, fade it a little bit, a little bit more in those like kind of organ type things. Looking good, I just want to get up here a little bit. And there you go, you got the internal fades inside of the little hoses. I think, uh, for the most part it looks good. There's a couple that just need a little bit of work real quick. And we're going to get our mix going again. Sometimes, you know, midstream, you have to just kind of adjust your airbrush just right to get everything working. And today is no different. There we go. Sometimes you just have to play around with it. Try to get your flow going just right. Oh, so we're very temperamental today. So, all right, we're just gonna, where are we gonna concentrate our efforts? So, I feel like I feel like it might be good. Uh, we'll go up here just a little bit. And along the back edge here. <clears throat> that is looking pretty fresh. Make sure we hit all our angles real quick. And that should be about it for the actual airbrush work. Now we're going to go in and do a little bit of brush work. Give it a little bit of a semi gloss. Now see on the back here, we're going to go in and hit it just a little bit more again. Because what's happening is 
the grays have or the grays have been absorbed into the blues so they dried remember transparent paint and all so you have to maintain you have to stay on top of it and work it till it is done Now grab your airbrushed wings right there and we're gonna give it a little bit of a glaze to kind of even out the highlights right there. So we're gonna grab our Gilliman glaze right here, grab a little palette to contain all that liquid on it. We actually don't need a whole lot, just maybe something like that because we're gonna make a little bit of a more of a glaze out of the glaze right there. And then we're gonna scoop up our mix of 50-50 future floor wax and pledge with or with water so 50-50 future floor wax or pledge with future whatever you want to call it and we're just going to add a few drops there making a, a bigger glaze out of it and of course we're using our trusty uh, chisel tip brush right here just to make I'm just checking to see if this glaze is good enough and Pull it out on this. Might be, might be a little too glazy. Oh, there we go. I can see it right there. So that looks good. So I think that's kind of what we want. Grab up our miniature and use this chisel brush to apply the glaze all the way down. Now, if you have a little portable tabletop fan, those are great for this because you can turn it on and it happens to uh, just keep air circulating around your whole project. Now I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with all this overspray right here. I may go back and fix it. But what you can do is just glaze that area too. And then what, what it kind of looks like is that maybe the glow of the wings is actually turned into some OSL right there with our little bit of overspray. If we glaze it down a little bit, I think we could make that work. And I'm going to flip it over very carefully and hit the back here. Now when you're doing double-sided detail features like this, you want to be very careful that you didn't get any down the side like you saw there on the sides. You want to make sure that you have a nice even coat as well. So I'm going to pull all that down. Now I'm going to dab off my brush and get in here and look for any glip glops or anything that looks to be pulling a little too much. So there's a lot of liquid on here so I'm not Super happy with how it's pooling right there at the ends. So I'm just going to pull all this excess liquid because I'm more worried about the fade, not at the end, but up towards the top with the other blue. So I'm just keeping those ends clean. And in here, it, it's not as pronounced because you've got these pipe fillets at the end. So I'm actually pretty happy with all that. So now if the fan was going, this actually would be pretty close to drying already. You know what I didn't do was get a little bit of this right here. So I'm just going to hit this and dab it off a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with this right now. We're just going to let it dry and come back in a few minutes and take a look at what, what we got. So here's your finished product here. You can see where we went in and got all the glib glops off. For the most part, it's dry, but there's a little bit of wet glaze still up in those pipe areas. So we're just gonna kinda let that do its thing for right now. Flip it over and you can see a little bit better all the glaze, we kinda pulled it off at the end. So it didn't dry and leave any residue. So I feel like the fade and glaze step is fully complete. Now we're gonna get out our paintbrush our actual paintbrush and do a little edge highlighting. All right, so we grabbed our brush and now we're gonna do some all thin gray highlights here from the same color that we used uh, to airbrush the very tips there. And we're actually gonna use the air paint right here because I really like using the more watered down paints because I feel like they have a better consistency. Now you might notice right here, I went back and I was tinkering with some metal as well. I was waiting for the glaze to dry to kind of get a better idea of how it would look. Now, something I wanted to show you, I really like these Army Painter metals because they are just very vibrant and very glowy. Now we're under a lot of lights right here. We're under the, the light halo, but let me, let me cut those off real quick and just show you the ambient light. And there you can see that 
it still shines. Like even it, it almost shines better in a normal daylight, so to speak. This is just a normal one light on in my room kind of type deal, and you can see how the metal shines. I mean, of course, it seems like it almost outshines itself with these um, halo lights right here. So it's it's very hard to see exactly how dope these metals really are. But I really, really think these Army Painter metals are going to be a staple of my hobby lineup for years to come. So just real quick, I'm going to open up this all thing gray here. Pop this bad boy open. Looks like looks like no separation, so we're good to go there. I really don't like these GW paint pots. Oh, they're so frustrating sometimes for uh, using for using them as airbrush paints because you almost want that you know um, dropper bottle kind of type feel. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna brace with our pinky and just go perpendicular on the edge right here just to get, I think I might have too much paint there. There we go. Just to go perpendicular on the edge right here. Let's catch it in focus. There we go. <laughs> Two less of paint now. See, that's how it happens. You always think that you don't have enough and sometimes you have exactly none. All right, let's try that one again. That was a little embarrassing. Good thing it's just me and you here. So there we go. You can kind of see what we're doing here, just hitting the very edge. Now this is watered down, so it is a little transparent, so it is gonna soak in and probably gonna have to do two coats. Now here's the here's the caveat. You can go all ham and you can do, man, this bottle is so frustrating. The daggone thing keeps closing on me. Oh, GW, redesign your airbrush paint pots. So you can go all ham and you can do all the angles in there. I'm not I'm not about that life. I'm on a I'm on a schedule so so to speak here, but I am going to hit all the major edges for sure. And I'm because just because of the fact that we're gonna hit it twice. So this is twice right there. You can see that's a nice solid edge leading into the golds there, which I'm probably gonna end up touching up and not do an OSL glow because this isn't a power weapon type deal. So let me knock that out and we'll be right back. So just to recap real quick, remember when I said you don't have to go all ham and get all those edges? Okay, so obviously I went ham and got all of the edges, but once I started doing it, I was like, man, it looks so it looks so good, I can't stop. So there it is. We hit all of the edges, including going all the way up to that gold interface right there. Now, I'm not super happy with some of those lines, but I know that once I go in there and do that gold that I probably will get some mess ups on the blue. So I'll touch everything up later at some point when I'm going back and doing all the gold. So for now, I'm gonna hit this up with some lusterless spray coat and call this job done. Now, if you don't have any lusterless, it comes in a small can just like this. Now this is semi-gloss, but it will say lusterless on it. So look for that at your local model store. So there you can see everything we've done to this point with the blue. Quick recap. We've got, we took Cantor Blue up to Lothrin Blue and then finish it out with Althan Gray and hit all the edges with Althan Gray. Now, if this was a wider wing set, like Celestine's wings, for instance, which I have right here, I would have threaded some of those colors a little bit more like Cantor with Lothran and then Lothran and then Lothran with Ulthan and then Ulthan and then I come back with a little black and do right here. So the more surface area you have, the more you have to make those fades work. So you can kind of see what's going on right there and where we're at with all that. Now, when I go back and line all this, I'm not sure. I probably won't get it all in there, but I'm definitely gonna get all the way around here and across the top for sure. So that's it for this one. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Hopefully we have all learned something today for sure about using those fantastic colors from Games Workshop that can really make just about anything pop when it comes to blues. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access, 
with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.